of my presentation. Um, all right, and we're gonna talk about typical daily meals in Brazil. Feel free to chime in. Okay, Leticia? Um, all right, so, so here we have breakfast and this picture, I really liked this picture because I feel like it, it, it depicts really well um, Brazilian breakfast. So as you can see right at the center of the picture, we have the French bread. Um, it's uh, a must have <laughs> there. And we love to, uh, to eat French bread with butter or cold cuts, as you can see down below, like sliced ham and cheese. We also have uh, queijo branco, queso blanco, right? And right next to it, we have the Brazilian cheese bread that you guys received the recipe card included in the product box. Um, that I shared that recipe with you guys in uh, juices, milk, coffee, uh, yogurt, liquid yogurt is very common in Brazil too. And in fruits, okay, coffee cakes as well. Uh, it's very common during, you know, for breakfast. All right, and here we have some typical dairy products in Brazil, since I mentioned some cold cuts and some dairy products for breakfast, uh, like queijo branco, but also we have prato cheese um, and mozzarella cheese. And then I'm going to talk a little bit about prato cheese just to give you guys an idea, you know, how it looks like, but it's pretty much like a mild cheddar cheese. Um, and also and Ariane. Yeah, I want to mention that I want to compliment that your region of Minas Gerais is the dairy uh, center in Brazil, just like mm -hmm. here, right? We have your dairy west in Brazil. <laughs> uh, Minas Gerais is really the dairy capital. That's true. Yeah. Uh, in fact, over a quarter of Brazil's agricultural property, so about like more than a million, um, are involved in milk production. It's a it's a huge thing there. And there is the sector with the, the sixth uh, highest gross value in Brazilian agriculture and around 80 percent of dairy farmers are smallholders. Uh, and Brazil is the fourth largest dairy producer in the world. So, yeah, it's um very, very present in our cuisine. And so here we have queijo branco. That's the one that I, I put here in the picture to show you guys. Um, and prato cheese, which is a very mild type, uh, uh, similar to cheddar cheese, mozzarella, provolone, parmesan cheese, all of them are really, really common there. Requeijão, I don't know if anyone have heard of this before. It's delicious. Some people say, oh, it's similar to cream cheese. Um, I don't think it's very similar. It's very, very creamy, you know, and um, and it's not. It's very soft. Uh, it's a very soft cheese bread. It's not because cream cheese is a little bit firmer than Hecajon. And liquid yogurt, as I mentioned. So we have the regular yogurt and liquid yogurt is also very common. All right. So lunch um, is our main meal. In Brazil, so this, to this day, it's still very common to to see businesses closing during lunchtime, um, you know, and then coming back to resume. But um, because lunch is the main meal, and so we have the typical structure uh, of lunch and also dinner is rice and beans, as I, I have in this photo here for you guys. Uh, some some type of meat and a salad, so, or vegetables. Um, roots as well, um, they are very common, such as cassava or yuca, um, carrots and sweet potatoes um, and beets or uh, tubers, such as potatoes. So it, it varies quite a bit, but uh, lunch and dinner, they're usually uh, like that. And dinner is a late meal. So it's not like here in the US around, you know, 6 p.m. It's usually later than that. Here, I, I just wanted to make sure that I would add a photo of yuca root for you guys. So here it's deep fried, um, which is a very, very common appetizer served in Brazil, usually with beer, you know, um, it's delicious, absolutely delicious. Um, and the Brazilian cheese bread 
um, uses the yucca flower. I mean, not the yucca flower. It's tapioca that comes from yucca. It's not the yucca flower. Um, but it's tapioca. originated in your state of Minas Gerais. Yes. Who, who yeah, we are famous for the COVID. <laughs> 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 that is true. <laughs> and so here, I could not left finger foods out because it's a huge one there too. So um, usually Americans um, who visit Brazil, they just fell in love with coxinha, which is the chicken filled um, finger food that is deep, deep fried. Um, it's delicious. And sometimes they add requeijão, that very soft cheese uh, with the chicken. So it melts, it's, it's absolutely delicious. Uh, and so it's filled with a variety of cheese, such as Parmesan, provolone, uh, mozzarella, and hikijan, like I said. And here, um, so you guys received a, a recipe card. Um, so if you'd like to give it a try, I highly recommend it. It's a, it's a delicious snack. Um, that you can easily make and you can also freeze the ones that you, you before baking, right? You can freeze them for later and uh, it, it tastes so good. It's a really good snack. I think Ariane, and you tell me if you agree with that, it is the freezing capability of the pão de queijo, the cheese bread that allowed it to become as commercialized as it is yeah that's true right? it, you uh yeah and so just another thing that is good to point out to you all is that like here um we have like mozzarella and parmesan cheese and uh typically it's made with the queijo branco the queso blanco that i showed in that previous picture um it's the aged queso blanco right that you shred and then it's part of the the dough and then Honestly, you can add any type of cheese, you know, because the gooey uh, texture comes from the tapioca flour. Right, Leticia? Yeah. And it's exactly, it's that you can change the cheese, but it's the, it's the tapioca flour that gives the gooey characteristics. Yeah. And it's gluten-free for those um, yeah. who have gluten-free. Yeah. All right, so uh, just a few traditional beverages. Um, it's very common to, to walk the streets and then you see people selling, you know, coconut water. They just cut it open for you and then just pour some coconut water, fresh coconut water for you. Um, fruit juices are also very common. That includes the, the Brazilian lemonade. And sugar cane juice is a very common one as well. And a classic combo, like if you go to a farmer's market down there in Brazil, most likely you're going to find a stand that is going <laughs> to sell sugar cane juice with uh, pastel, which is empanada, right? So, Love it. <laughs> yeah, it's delicious. And um, the fermented sugar cane juice is um, the cachaça. That ah, is there you are. Caipirinha. Uh -huh. Um, so as we call it, like the Brazilian whiskey or tequila, right? So like Leticia explained, it's basically cachaça, the fermented sugarcane juice with um, uh, lime and sugar and ice. And then you just shake it. And that's how caipirinha is made. And it's sold all over uh, the country. And Not just the country, right? What's that? Not just in Brazil anymore. No, now yeah. it's really international, thank goodness, <laughs> but, <laughs> right? But the difference between rum and cachaça, they both come from fermented sugar cane, but the rum is, comes from the molasses of the sugar cane and the cachaça comes from sugar cane juices. That's the difference. Yeah, thank you. So the next one that many of you probably know, uh, Guaraná, right? So this soda that is very famous, not only in Brazil, uh, even here in the US, you can find these like in, in regular, you know, stores. Um, so it's a Brazilian, so Guaraná is a, a Brazilian plant native to the Amazon basin. A mature Guaraná fruit is about the size of a coffee berry and it resembles the human eye. It, it's very funny. <laughs> 
The next one, which is also very, uh, very traditional beverage in Brazil is uh, vitamina de frutas, which is basically like just shakes, you know, just milk blended with fruits. And in this picture, I have a, a papaya shake. So basically papaya milk and uh, sugar to taste. And we do that like with other fruits too, like bananas, strawberries, mango, it's delicious, uh, avocado. Because I don't know if you guys know, avocado for us in Brazil, it's a fruit, right? So for us, it's like a sweet uh, food to have. It's not savory like here in the US. So guacamole is not really a thing for us there. Um, and so we, we use that like in sweet uh, dishes and beverages. And it's very creamy. So if you'd like to to give it a try sometime. I highly recommend it. It's delicious. In fact, in my cookbook, I added a dessert with avocado. Oh, nice. yeah, yeah, it's an avocado creme brulee. So you beat uh, sweetened condensed milk and avocado in a food processor. You spread it over, add a little bit of sugar, burn it, and that's your creme brulee. It's so okay. delicious. Oh, I can imagine. <laughs> And the last one, Shimahão, which is the favorite drink in the southernmost state of Brazil, uh, Rio Grande do Sul, right? The gauchos. So they love it. And um, it's a tea made with the mate herb. All right, guys. So I'd like to briefly talk about the Brazilian dietary um, uh, guidelines. They, um, I know I'm biased to say, but they are pretty cool. And it's this, the second and latest edition came out in 2014, and it promotes a healthy relationship with food, taking into account not only environmental and human well-being, but also political and social cultural life. So um, it, it's pretty cool. The golden rule uh, of the Brazilian dietary guideline is always prefer fresh or minimally processed foods and culinary preparations instead of ultra processed foods. And um, I'm a big fan of the, the Brazilian dietary guideline because it's not prescript prescriptive. So it doesn't suggest dieting at all and doesn't get into specifics of portion sizes and uh, how much food would be considered like healthy because it takes into account that it varies from person to person. So it's not prescriptive. Um, and this aligns with uh, the approach that I take in my work as well, um, in my nutrition counseling. So I really love it. So here in this picture, um, basically it just depicts the, the golden rule um, that like always prefer fresh or minimally processed foods and culinary preparations instead of ultra processed foods. So as you can see here, uh, just like the bulk of it, most of it would be uh, fresh foods and then uh, just a little bit of um, highly processed foods. All right, so just to to you know, close our presentation. I'd love to, if you guys are not hungry yet, you're gonna be really hungry right now. <laughs> We're gonna show some typical Brazilian dishes, traditional Brazilian dishes real quick before uh, we end this presentation. And of course the famous um, bean stew uh, called feijoada. So basically bean stew with beef and pork and it's served with uh, sauteed collard greens, rice and oranges uh, as well. And also yuca, like uh, toasted yuca flour, just for some texture, for some crunchiness. Um, it's, it's delicious. And here we have churrasco, arroz piamontese. Right, these dishes, especially the churrasco and the and the feijoada, they are really gastronomic events in Brazil. We kind of like work the entire week around going to a feijoada on a Saturday or going to a churrascaria on a Sunday. And it's a big meal with, with uh, you know, a very Epicurean, you know, uh, uh, exercise in eating and culture too. That's so true. And the arroz piemontese recipe, we included the recipe card in the product box as well. So 
Um, yeah, I, I, I want to talk about that recipe because it's really a recipe that I grew up and it has a very Italian name, but it's really a very Brazilian recipe. Basically, imagine it's a cousin of the mac and cheese. With the mac and cheese, what we do is you have cooked pasta and you make a sauce with cheddar cheese, right? And then you mix the two, then then you have your mac and cheese. Some people put a little bit of breadcrumbs on top and put it in the oven. The rice is a great recipe for when you have leftover rice and you don't know what to do with it. So you make the sauce. It's not the sauce is not quite the same as the one we use with mac and cheese. We don't use flour. So it's just heavy cream, mozzarella and parmigiano. And then you mix it with the rice and then you have uh, arroz piemontesi. And the name comes because it was it started in Rio and it was with um, a tapas bar in which the chef was for from Italy and he named it piemontesi. That's the origin of the name. Love it. So the next one is moqueca de peixe or fish stew. It's very common like uh, for fish and seafood in general. And typically it's made with coconut milk. And here you guys can see the soapstone pots, yeah. uh, right? So look how pretty they are. It's rustic, but it's very chic too. Chic too. So it's amazing. I, I just love how they look, how the dishes look in those pots. Yeah, I love all kinds of stone pots and clay pots. They add a certain totally. uh, characteristic, right, to the dish. Yeah, definitely. So the next one, acarajé, uh, which is a type of fritter made from black-eyed peas. Um, and the dish is traditionally found in, in the state of Bahia in the northeast, especially in the city of Salvador. And it's very, very spicy. <laughs> And here we have the famous acai bowls. Now we, find, we, we can find them everywhere uh, here in the US. So acai is, is super rich in antioxidants and acai palms are common along the Amazon River estuary and are co cultivated on floodplains, especially in the state of Pará, uh, a state in the, in the very north of Brazil. All right, so here we have some coconut macaroons, like delicious and very, very typical in Brazil. And pudim, pudim de leite flan here, right? Uh, which is a custard, custard dessert with a layer of clear caramel sauce. And just to wrap up, we have brigadeiro, the, the chocolate truffles, that you guys also have a recipe um, that I that I shared with you all. Uh, and hopefully you're gonna give it a try. It's really simple to make and it's delicious. And you can change to like have different um, sprinkles on top too. All right, so as we get to the end of the presentation, I would love to share uh, a few links here with you guys. If you'd like to explore a little bit more about the dietary guidelines for Brazilian adults, this link here, the second link there, um, it's straight from the Brazilian government, so the health department, so it's in Portuguese, but down below the very last link is a, is a, it's a paper um, when they talk about, they compared actually um, the, the dietary guidelines of different countries and Brazil included, and they talk about uh, really good things about the Brazilian dietary guidelines. All right, so that was it. And here at this very last um, uh, slide, we have our contact information. Um, you guys, if you'd like to contact me directly, feel free to send me an email at ariani at positive-nutrition.com. I'm also on Instagram at arianior.rd and uh, positive-nutrition.com is the website. And let's just so like to... Tell a little bit about your contact info. Yeah, absolutely. You can find me very easily. I am all over the internet. My website is right there, chefleticia.com. You can find my books. It's never too uh, early to think about the holidays. If you want a signed book, get in touch with me. The books are available also 
anywhere books are sold, Amazon, Barnes and Nobles. I'm also on Instagram. Uh, so yes, and if you cook the recipes, if you have any questions about the recipes we did today or any other recipes or substitutions, feel free to get in touch. It's Leticia at chefleticia.com. The email is right there. Awesome. Thank you.